Hey gang, so I thought I'd give you a quick uh, update on Toten Sontag. And this game came to me from Lock and Load, Unbidden, and I knew it was the core command system, and I think that's about all I knew about it. Uh, so who knew what the hell it was going to be like, right? I hadn't played that game before, and uh, I'd seen it, read about it a little bit, and my buddies have all played it and like it. So I thought, okay, let's give this a try. And I opened up the box and I did the review, and not the review, the shrink rip thing. I was like, well, this looks pretty cool. So uh, so let's talk about getting into the game. And I don't want you to think of this as a review because I really have only played it twice. And I don't think, uh, I don't think I fully appreciate all of the subtlety that perhaps is available here in this game. Uh, uh, and I'm not going to do the whole uh, breakdown on the components and everything like that because we've already you've seen all that in the other video. So you want to know what the counters look like and all the rest of it. Go look at the other video. Uh, there are two comments I have about form and function of the game that I think could be improved upon. The first is make uh, this. The map comes in two halves. Let me just pick the map up off here. So uh, the first is, you know, it's, it's two halves like this, right? A nice map uh, material and all the rest of it. Would have been nice to see that printed on one crunch, one large piece of paper, right? Or map, map uh, board or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, who knows? A deluxe version might be nice one day with a mounted map. I think that'd be kind of cool. I did like, uh, one thing I will say is I did like the the turn track going around the side here that uh, all seem to be oriented, oriented towards the allied player more though than anybody else. So, you know, maybe a separate track for that, I don't know, but I didn't have any issues with that, it was fine. So, really nice components. The, and the only other issue I had with the counters, and that's me, my age, don't tell anybody. But uh, there are the formation details on these are really hard to read unless it's in uh, a fairly bright light. The font's very fine. And I think you could have put the formation detail in in some way, shape or form differently. Maybe had a smaller icon or something like that. Anyway, uh, the game played surprisingly quickly. When I saw that there were gonna be four impulses per turn, and have a role for initiative for every couplet or, or impulse in those inside the turn. I was like, oh man, it's gonna be one of those games, kind of like that Vagram game out of uh, Battles, uh, the Battles magazine, where you're just constantly pulling shits and doing crap. There's 50 things that have to happen. It doesn't work like that. The game goes really quickly because sometimes with this initiative system that I discussed in other videos, Sometimes, if you roll a five or a six, you ain't moving anything. Uh, if, you, if your recon units are dead, then you're done. You don't have anything to move in your, that given impulse, which means one or two times out of four in each given turn, you might actually not have anything to do. So that is really frustrating when you have that, uh, you've got to sit back and basically take it, right? Your, uh, your the Germans are coming at you, all the allies are coming at you, depending on on the ratings. Now, if I actually went through and put all the units into a spreadsheet and looked at all the initiative factors for them, I could, pro you know, I could give you an accurate answer to this. But it feels like to me that the the Germans have an edge in factors in that more of their units are three, four, or five than the Commonwealth does, and the Commonwealth units. Uh, predominantly weighted towards twos and threes, I think. Add to that, that to the fact that the the, the DAC forces then, uh, Axis forces then have, if there's a tie, the, the initiative always goes to the, the German, the Axis player. So, so that was interesting. So you've got this weight of uh, momentum going to the Germans, even though they're on the defense. And given the terrain uh, from this battle, I'm not familiar with it historically at all. I uh, probably should be. Uh, in fact, I might, I wonder if that's, um, this is not on the Tunisia section of the war at all, I don't believe. No, it's in Libya, so uh, that won't be there. Uh, 
there's this valley basically and the, there's two ridges and hilltops and stuff and you've got to get through back actually get through two valleys and my commonwealth forces twice got demolished trying to do that first off a rush to too fast into the jaws of death uh, those panzers came out uh, eventually those panzers came out and then combined with uh, the appropriate forces that get a bonus so having a combined arms bonus and it was game over then because your attacks became uh, modified up significantly on the die rolls so Add a little bad die rolling for the UK and the uh, particularly the UK because they took the brunt of the beating. Uh, that they they resigned in the first game pretty quickly and the second game went a little bit longer, but we basically had the same result. Um, I probably want to play it a couple more times. I'd like to play this opposed actually because I think this would be a fun game opposed uh, to really kind of dig into the tactics and how to play it properly. It's one thing to play it by yourself and you, know, you play it play the rules accurately, but you're not necessarily thinking through all the nuance of uh, what you can or can't do with the with the system and, and how the system can be made to work for you, yeah? Uh, I even went to the trouble of making a little uh, rules summary. You don't need that. This game's dead simple, straightforward. But there are, like an onion, there's some layers in here with the initiative system and electing to go first or go second. Uh, who you can move and how you move them and how you attack. Uh, I didn't do a lot, I didn't find myself doing a lot of overruns. I didn't feel the desire to do that or need to do that. I can just assault guys and uh, kind of go for it from there. I felt pretty powerful as a German panzer unit with some infantry with me to just knock the crap out of the... Uh, the crappy uh, English tanks. So the the British and the Allies had a little bit of a rough, a little bit of rough go of it in this game uh, from the, the my playthroughs. So that's Totenstag, Toten Sonntag, I should say. Someone told me that means Death Sunday. I know, I know Sonntag is Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, the Toten is the Death Head. Uh, what's that SS division? Um, it's the totem something, right? Uh, so there you go. The Dead Sunday. Good game. I like this. It's fun. I think uh, it's a, a good introductory level title. I would uh, probably encourage you to get it if you want to get into war games. It's got enough interesting little system mechanical style things that will get you out of that framework of hexes and counters and zones of control and moving and having to attack and not having to attack. It's interestingly uh, put together. It's a really good game and it helps me understand why Dawn's Early Light is so successful. So both of these are in stock now apparently. Um, I'm going to go try this uh, other game, uh, Gazala, now and see what that's like. That's got a completely different set of rules, but let's go see what it's like. Talk to you soon.